thank, thank you. you so much for joining us. Now that 12% higher than, 12, than 2011, the mm -hmm. forecast of, of what you expect the market is going to do, what is fueling that growth? And also considering that on the back of what's happening in the global economy right now. Well, what's fueling that growth, and you correctly asked, um, is the increase that we see in the middle class in, uh, in Africa. Um, Africa has about one billion uh, population. 34.3% of that population is in the, what we call the middle class, and we see it increasing. An increase in the middle class will definitely require, uh, the, will definitely allow people to have more disposable income, more requirements for travel, not only for leisure travel, but as well as business uh, between countries. I believe that's the main prim uh, primary reason why we see this increase in traffic, an increased middle class, more disposable income, increased in business requirements between countries. And do you see African airlines now preparing for, for that growth? Yes, there are. Um, Boeing alone currently has about 78 airplanes on order in Africa. Uh, from carriers such as Ethiopian Airlines, Kenya Airways, Rwanda, so countries that are uh, small and large airlines like Angola Airlines. Why? Because they are preparing themselves for an increase in traffic. Traffic that will fuel the economies of these countries as well. One of the things that has been a concern is safety on the African continent. And, what, and I suppose one of the issues is that I, I was looking at the, at the top countries, you know, that are on the list of, of um, they've, had, they've had the most accidents, DRC and Sudan at the top of that list. But then what, what this report was saying, where I got this from, was that what happens is that the view is that African airlines, and it's all grouped together, mm -hmm. that that is the perception that African airlines are not safe, even though you do, you know, you, you can pick out the countries that, that are having these, these problems. I'm not going to hide the fact that safety is a major concern. Um, Africa as a whole does in fact uh, have the highest um, safety concerns in within our industry. Recently we had an IATA safety conference here in Johannesburg four weeks ago to address exactly the issue of safety. Is it fair to say that every country in Africa is at the same level in its regulatory affairs? No, that's not fair to say that. Is it fair to say that every airline uh, is suffering of the same issues, whether they are cultural issues or shortage of uh, personnel, qualified people, no, it's not fair to say that either. And unfortunately, the world looks at Africa as a whole continent. Within Africa, we have countries that are in very well, very good standing within the regulatory environment, such as South Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya, and now even Angola. Um, yes, I'm from Angola, but Angola is the first country that actually was placed in the European blacklist and has successfully I wanted to removed from it. I wanted to ask you about that and, and some of the things that they did to mm -hmm. turn that around because uh, you were saying that one of the things that you do is that if a, if a country asks you to go in and help them, right. you would be able to do that. What has Angola done to turn that around for themselves? The, the one, and it seems to be the more exoteric item, but the most critical item that they did was starting to change the culture within the airline, within the regulatory affairs that Africa is a major contributor to the country's economy. And uh, I mean, aviation, commercial aviation is a major contributor to the, to the economy of the country. And to do so, it has to operate in a regulated environment that's safe, that allows people to choose to travel on that airline to that country. Granted, we have foreign airlines flying to a lot of countries in Africa that are having serious issues. But it is possible to get out of this cycle of being an and yes, Boeing can in fact support airlines, and we supported Angola with a variety of programs, technical programs, evaluation programs, audits of their maintenance facilities. We worked very closely for three years with the regulatory environment to the point where the country is functioning as a truly regulated environment, just like Ethiopia is, or Kenya, or Ethiopia, or uh, Nigeria, and of course South Africa. Let's talk a little bit about some of the skills that are going to be needed, because when mm -hmm. we start talking about that expansion and that growth, we are going to need the skills, the technicians, the pilots, and everybody else that comes in to, in, into play there. And it seems though th that your organization again plays a role, you know, in 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 that being mm -hmm. um, developing those skills. It's. It's tough to be from Africa and witness the lack of resources that we have in Africa to run the airlines, to run the infrastructure in the countries that allows Africa airlines to be safe. We, uh, the number that you saw in the beginning of the program and that you quoted 900 airplanes over the next 20 years, assuming that nothing else was to change, yes, we require about 16,000 pilots, 15,500 
400 pilots. Where are these pilots going to come from? From the outside world? Airlines can't handle that. They have to come from within Africa. We have to be able to train people, not only to train them and to keep them employed, but to keep them in Africa, not allow the brain drain that we are currently experiencing. Engineers and mechanics. We need about 15,000 engineers and mechanics to keep these 900 airplanes, plus what's already flying today, in safe operation, in also efficient operation for the airlines, making money for the airlines. We can't afford to have airplanes on the ground. If we don't have mechanics, where is the airplane going to be? If we don't have the pilots, where is the airplane going to be? I have to ask you about yes. aging aircraft because that has also come under the spotlight mm -hmm. as one of the reasons that, that you know, Africa has the amount of accidents mm -hmm. that, it, that it does. How much of that is, is playing into this? Because sometimes you have the, you have the, the debate of it's, it's, it's the lack of personnel, there's so many issues, but then how much of this is playing into that? It's not correct to just say that an aging airplane contributes to a low safety um, ratio. Airplanes can be old and they can fly safety if properly maintained and mm -hmm. properly operated. So everything starts with a good regulatory environment that provides for a safe, efficient uh, op operation of the airplanes. Um, the, m the, more, the more serious problem with aging airplanes is not necessarily the safety, but the excessive fuel consumption and the maintenance costs. An older airplane consumes substantially more fuel and uh, a lot higher maintenance costs. Boeing, as well as other manufacturers, we have the airplanes that can replace these aging airplanes and substantially reduce um, the cost of the airline. I have to ask you this, in yes. terms of innovation, which, is, which are among the, the aircraft that you're seeing, number one, that mm -hmm. African airlines are buying the most and that you are most excited yeah. about in terms of all that fuel efficiency and really having a fleet that mm -hmm. is, is prepared for the future? I'll give you two examples very quickly. 737NG, now the so-called the 737 MAX, the new, Boeing, the, um, the, the new airplane we launched recently, already 1,200 orders. It's an airplane that's going to contribute about 13% lower operating costs to an airline. 13% lower operating costs is something not to laugh about. It's dramatic. An airplane that we are more excited about is, the, of course, the 787, the Dreamliner. Uh, four uh, airlines in Africa have ordered the airplane, Royal Air Maroc, uh, uh, Arik Air in Nigeria, Ethiopia and Kenya. Ethiopia is about to receive the first airplane towards the end of the month. The first route that they're actually going to start flying the airplane, we believe, is Johannesburg. So we're absolutely delighted to see the, the first African carrier receiving the airplane flying to Africa. That's an airplane that's going to contribute 20% to 23% lower operating costs over the existing airplanes today. I have to ask you very, very mm. quickly, one of the issues that we've had with our airlines is, is yes. profitability and some of them really, really struggling, some of them having their governments or needing their governments mm -hmm. to bail them out <coughs> because they're not actually being profitable, operating profitably. <coughs> How can that be turned around? And I know it's, it's a huge, very broad question, but if you were to, to, to just pick at it. It's broad. Um, it's broad questions and different airlines in different parts of the world have addressed the issue of profitability differently. But even during the economic crisis, there have been airlines that have remained profitable. Profitable because they do the right things. They, they, they take the right steps to run the airline as an economic concern. I'm not so concerned that an airline is government owned as much as they are allowed to operate on a commercial basis. It is possible, and Ethiopia is a good example, of an airline that's 100% government owned, yet it can function without government intervention. Ethiopian airlines can do that. If Ethiopian airlines can do that, other airlines can do it as well. And TAG, for example, is starting to function in that mode. So can South African Airways. At some point, you may need some government inter uh, interference to be able to get out of the cycle. So you have a cash in injection, and at some point the government ought to say, enough is enough. We're giving you the cash injection now for you to turn yourself around, but from now on, you're on your own. And it is possible for government-owned airlines to operate on a commercial basis and be profitable. That is being proven by the open airlines to some extent already with Kenya. TAG is starting to get into that point as well. Other airlines can get there. Thank you so much for joining us, Miguel. Thank you very much, Hannah. Well, after the break, we review the latest numbers in job creation in the South African economy. Do stay tuned for that.